All right. I'm going to add a new item to this. We said that when we start a program, what do we write? We write define. What is this? CRT. CRT what? No, no. Be precise. OK. Secure no warnings, right? Then include standard input output dot h. Don't call it studio, because then you're going to write studio. And then you're going to tell me it doesn't work, OK? Standard input up, oops, standard input output dot h. OK. And when we are writing it, I always say int main, because main is returning an integer to operating system. And it doesn't get anything from operating system, correct? And I'm going to say over here, return, return 0. And then that becomes a function that we just talked about, right? Now, take a look at this. I'm going to write over here. exchange, OK? So that's the name of my function. Not an exchange. Uh, uh, what do you call it? What should I call a, a, a function that uh, uh, breaks down uh, money into uh, uh, coins? Coin dispenser? Ch change maker? Whatever. You had cash register, right? <clears throat> so that change maker thingy that we had. So. Change maker, I'm going to call it. This function does not return anything to anyone. But it's going to receive some money. OK? So this function of mine is going to receive some money. Are we OK with this? Any problem? Now let's try and see how these functions work. So in here, I'm going to create a double value. And in here, I'm going to say printf, please enter the money value. OK? And then I'm going to read that. Scanf, a double, and put it in the address of value. Then I'm going to say, hey, change maker, get that value. Got it? Now in here, I'm going to say printf the money value is percent point two lf, which means I just want to have two digits of shown over there. And I'm going to show over here money and go to new line. So that function is not doing it, just showing you how simple functions are. You write the function, you call the function. You explain what it returns. It doesn't return anything. It just prints something. Again, remember, attention. This is called the argument list, the place, the mouth of the function, where it receives information. This is functions bum bum, where things go back out, OK? So things get out of there, things getting from here. The mouth and the deposit of the function. What send is it sends out? This function is not sending anything out, which means it's not giving back anything to main. If I had something like this, a is equal to, then it had to return something. Because I'm not getting the value putting it anywhere, it doesn't return anything. OK? It just receives stuff. So if a function prints something, that's not a return value. Arguments and returning values work between functions, not outside world. It happens inside this box. Nothing goes out. When you give something to a function, it means one function gave some function something else. When you are returning something, it means that function returned something else to another thing. You won't be able to see it. It's this the conversation happening between functions. 
What you can see is what you print and what you scan. It has nothing to do with what function receives and what function returns. That's outside world. So if you want to communicate with people outside of the computer, you do scanf, you do printf, it could be anywhere. When you want the functions in a program talk with each other, you pass values and you through the argument list, you get values out of the return state. Are we okay with this? Is there anyone over here who did not understand what I just said? Okay, so in here I'm gonna say money and I'm gonna do that. So, so let's run this program and see how it works. So, so I'm gonna run the program and three years later when it compiles it. By the way, I just press F10. And I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to bring this one over here. So we'll do like this. So in here, I'm going to have a double value. Obviously, I have garbage in it. There is no, nothing in it, right? This is, by the way, debugging. <laughs> I am debugging this program now. I'm going through the, OK? So there is no value in here. Then I'm going to say, please enter the money value. And as soon as I execute it, it's going to show it, OK? Show the message in here. Then it's going to get, the, uh, get a double value and put it in the address of value. So it's going to wait for me over there to enter the value. Over there, I'm going to enter uh, your favorite number. What was that number that you had? 8. <laughs> 8.68, which, uh, which everybody thought that that's the only possible number. When you are writing a program, it could be anything. We're just, I'm just doing it for the heck of it. Just OK? 6, 8. And, I'll do that, actually. <laughs> OK, so mine has some partial values, which is impossible. Money cannot do have that, that, have that one. But I'm just doing it to see what happens. OK, so I hit Enter. Now if I look at the value over here, that's it's at 8, 6, 8, 7, whatever garbage that I put afterwards. Now I'm going to say, put that value in here and send it to ChangeMaker. Now I cannot press F10 anymore. Why? Because if you look at debugging, F10 means step over. What does it mean, step over? OK, I'm stepping over this line. OK, I'm jumping over the time. It means it's going to execute the whole thing like it did for scanf. You want to step into it to see how it works. So now I'm going to press F11, not F10 anymore, because I want to see how it runs. I want to walk through it. I want to debug it. So in here, I'm going to press F11. Oh, no, not that one. F11, this one. OK, step into. And as soon as I do that, it's just going to jump in here. You see that? Execution from here went there. So the value was whatever it was, it got passed to money. So money got the value that the value variable had. Are we OK with this? Now it's going to say the money value is and print that value that is 869. Why? Because that 8 has a 7 over there, and it rounded it up. Are we OK with this? Anybody have any problem with this? Problem one. Problem two. Sold. OK. So now that we have the money value in here, we can write our program in there. So in here, I've got the money value. I'm going to say, OK, I want to change this, find the, 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 the amount of change in this thing. I'm going to. I'm going to write over here integer cents, OK? And I'm going to say the money value is this. First, I'm going to show it. Then I'm going to say cents is money multiply by 100, correct? Whatever the value is in the money, it's going to get by 100. So it's 868 becomes 868 and goes into uh, what? Goes into what? Sense. Goes into sense. Right? So now I'm going to say printf. That is percent D cents. And go to new line. And I'm going to put over here cents. Right? Now I'm going to run it again just to see what happened. It's that casting thingy that we have done. Again, I have a double value, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it, come over here, here, 
Now this time I'm going to press F. Oh, so sorry. The I forgot to do this. My apologies. Comes over here. All right. So where were we? Yeah, in here. So I'm going to put uh, 9.32 now, and I'm going to hit Enter. Okay. So it's going to say Change Maker Pass uh, uh, 9.32 to. And I always tell you, look at this three at the end. You see that? That's why double values are not precise. They always have something at the end that is not precise. Remember that. OK? So then I'm going to go F11, and it's going to go inside that now. Money has what? 932. Money value is 9.32. And then I'm going to say over here, cents. Money, that is 932, multiplied by 100. It's going to go to cents. Cents is garbage. As soon as that happens, cents becomes 932. So I have 932 cents. Correct? Are we OK with this? Perfect. Now I want to see how many toonies I have in here. How do I find out? How do I find out? You don't know what toonie means? It's two dollars. Two dollars. Welcome to Canada. OK. <laughs> oh, Canada. OK, how many toonies <clears throat> in here? How do I find out? I'm going to say printf the printf. So toonies will be, how do you write toonies? Like this? How do you write toonies? T-O-O, -O, like this? OK. It shows that I am an EFL student. Yes. Pardon me? Oh, that's a new version of printf. Printf. OK. Printf toonies. And I'm going to put over here percent D. And in here, I'm going to put what? 9, oh, not 9.32 cents, divided by 200. Voila. OK? Are we OK with this? So that's going to be it. So now I have the number of toonies over there. Now I want to get the toonies out. So I'm going to say cents will be set to cents minus cents divided by 200. Multiply by 200. Right or wrong? Can I do that? Why am I doing this? I had modulus. <laughs> right? So I can, instead of doing that, I'm going to say cents mod. What do I do? Pardon me? By 200. Correct? Are we OK with this? So what's going to go in the, what's going to go in cents now after that? I know, but what's the value? It's 932. <laughs> Let's do it. Remaining cents percent D. Let's go new line over here. And new line over here. Oh, oh not, there, not there, not there. What did I do? What did I do? And in here, I'm going to put cents. OK. So. I'm going to do control F5. I'm going to run through it as it goes. So 932. Oh, remaining cents. Wait a minute. What happened? Did I make a mistake? Uh, cents is 932. Oh, you said 932, not 932. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Control F5. I, f I forgot the dot. <laughs> Where's 932? 9.32. That's better. OK. What is the remaining cents? 132 cents, correct? Now we want to find the loonies, correct? 
this is the proper way of finding changes, not to go adding 0.005 cents to it. OK? You have to change it. Whenever you're dealing with money, bring it to cents, do your calculation, and be done with it. Get rid of that double that creates garbage crap around, OK? Just do it like that, and you're done. OK, should I continue this? Yes, OK. I was hoping you'd say, no, we understood, yes. Yeah, I could bring this in main. The only difference is that now, the only difference is that I am doing the exact same thing that you have done. The only difference is that I am putting it in a separate module. So if somebody looks at my program, they're going to say, OK, uh, what your program is going to do? It's going to get a money value, and it's going to show me how much change that is. It doesn't know how it works. It's exactly you not knowing how F works. Do you know how printf works? No, but you correct? Do you know how change maker works? No, unless you go look at its code. That's the idea of a function. See, <clears throat> did I tell you don't procrastinate? You should procrastinate. No, no, not. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Not to do programming, but while you're programming, you should procrastinate. Which means if you get pieces and parts that you think it's a complicated thing, just out of your imagination, name a function and create a function somewhere. And be done with it. So you only think of that task and you're done. If I ask you to create a change machine that does this and that and printes messages, you should have written just a change maker function to do the change and then deal with the rest of the stuff. The good thing is that like this, you, broke, you break a huge task in your programming into small pieces. And, and tasks become smaller to focus on, therefore it's feasible. I cannot tell you to build a house just like that. You have to build it brick by brick, drywall by drywall. Go step by step. First, you have to build the walls. That's how everything works. If I told you to bring like a package of 90 computers, you cannot bring the whole thing. You have to break it in down into one computer at a time and do the things one by one. That's how programming works. That's why functions are there. So whenever you feel that your main goal Whenever you think your main goal can be broken down into smaller goals, it means you need functions. And each smaller task, each smaller goal, become a function and a separate thing that should be done. That's actually how programming teams work. When you're five people, you have five functions. Each person does the function separately. The system analyst puts the, the the programming lead puts them together and tests it to see if it works or not. And it says, Jack, you wrote that, that part wrong. Joe, you wrote, you wrote this part wrong. And so on and so forth. Are we OK with this? Yes. So that's like a call function. The function is just not in the program, but it's like it's still in the program. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Could you please mention that again? Uh, when you call the function. <laughs> It's not in the main program, but it's still like in the actual program, right? So the thing was, you didn't do any big deal over here. You wrote a function, but the damn function is still in my program. I can see it. How can I hide the complex things that I'm doing over here so it doesn't clutter my brain? That's very simple. You know how you do that? Ah, perfect. So this is how you do it. OK? So now. Your attention over here. So in here, I'm going to say add. I'm going to say new item. OK? And I'm going to mention over here, uh, what should I call the source code, the, the code, the, the file that's going to contain the source code for the change maker? So I'm going to call it change, uh, money change. The reason that I'm putting a different name is to show you that it can be any name. But of course, I would have loved to call it actually changemaker.c. OK? I'm just, I'm just going to, yeah, moneychange.c, I'm going to call it. All right? And I'm going to go over here and grab this program of mine and put it in this one. Now, you don't have it in here anymore, correct? But there is a problem. 
What's the problem here? The problem is that you didn't know we have tutors in Seneca. I told you. I told you, hey, guys, down in learning centers, we have tutors. Now you know. Do you see any tutors here? No. But you know it's out down, downstairs, right? So your need for tutoring will not issue any errors. Because you know there's a tutor and you can go downstairs when you want to, right? It's the same thing with here. So if in main, OK, I do not introduce that I have a function that does change making thingy, it will give me an error. Therefore, you just bring its name and you paste it up here and put a semicolon at the end. That means Mr. Main or Mrs. Main, do not worry. There is a function called changemaker somewhere. Compiler will find it for you later. Just compile the code, be happy. OK? Now, of course, like this, you see there is, like, if I completely remove this thing, so if, let me just save this. That was a beautiful question. That's worth, like, 2% uh, for the first test. So I'll remove this. So as you see, I have change making, and there is nothing else, right? I can actually go over here and say compile. You see? Successful. Nothing failed. Perfect. But if I try and run it, then it's going to tell me, hey, you told me there is a change mark here. I cannot find it. It's like I tell you there are tutors down in Tim Hortons. They're going to help you while you get coffee. You're happy. You're going to go down there, Tim Hortons, where are the sea tutors? They're going to say, are you crazy? Then they're going to come back and say, what do you do? Like, like pull your leg for heaven's sake? That's what happened here. But to actually have those things, I have to include the file. Not include. I have to, because include is like that one. It's not include. I have to bring that into the solution, which means I have to say, I'm going to add the existing item. That was the source code for ch money change thingy. OK, now it's there. Now compiler knows what are all the files. Now if I actually compile and run it, it's not going to complain because it finds the code somewhere else and works perfectly. Okay? And now you're going to have your main program clear and nice and all the dirty stuff happening somewhere else. So now if I want to know how much sense I have in here, then I'm going to go again sense. <coughs> Sense set to, uh, uh, how many, uh, uh, I want to, no, I have to, I wanted to find loony, uh, to, uh, loonies now. So printf loonies percent d backslash n. Now in here I'm going to say sense divided by what? 100. Perfect. Right? No. Division. I want to see how many loonies are in there. So it's only one. Now I want to see what is the remaining sense. So I'm going to come back and copy this thing over here. Copy. Come back over here. Now I'm going to say over here 100. Now I'm going to have remaining sense. OK? And then I want to find, I, I, I can keep going like this. Uh, uh, what is the other one? So loonies after loonies, what do I have? I have quarters. So printf uh, quarters. Then I have percent %d. And that's in cents. How many, what is the thing? How, uh, how do I do quarter? What is the, the, the value for quarters? 25. OK? So please complete this code for times and, and keep going like that. I don't want to do that. And, and at the end, what remains is? The amount of pennies, yes. OK, one more time. What did you say? You're talking, which line you're talking about? So what happens over here is this. The, I didn't divide it yet. I just wanted to see what is the result of the division. It's, I'm not interested to divide it and keep the value. I just want to print it out. 
What's important for me is the remainder, not the division. By division, I can just find out how many 200s I have in here. And I'm printing it, so I'm done. Why do I keep it somewhere? Why do I have to have 50 variables? I've seen all your code. You had this much variables to do this. Well, you don't need to. When you already printed the result, then why do you need a variable for it? You see, and, and so what happens over here, all I'm saying, okay, so I find out how many cents I have, so that's the amount of cents. I have this much 200s in it, that's the toonies. How much is left? That I need. That's the remaining cents, right? Then I'm going to have, now I want, now I want, <laughs> now I want, <laughs> now I want loonies. I'm, I am just baffled why people are recording this, because... I am recording this, and I'm putting it on YouTube. But anyway, so cents, cents divided by 100, then this shows how many loonies, then I'm going to get the remainder. So, and then quarters, then I'm going to get the remainder. And I've got to keep going like that. And at the end, and at the end, that's going to be it. So, pardon me? No, that, that's the thing. What is the beauty of it? that you do it wrong, and you see there are 50 different ways of doing this. Yeah. OK? But there is always one best way. Probably this is not the one. Probably you're going to take a look at it and say, wait a minute. I can have it even easier and better than that. OK? So let me, let me finish this thing. I wanted to tell you to go finish it, but I know you will not. So uh, sense, and I'm going to say printf. Uh, what is the other thing? Uh, so, uh, so remaining cents. Oh, I didn't do that. So I have to say cents is cents uh, mod 25. And remaining cents. Now, <laughs> guys, guys, take a look. Hi, hi, hi. Take a look at me, please. You see, I keep saying remaining cents, cents. Remaining cents, cents, right? Right? You see that? I don't like that. Because it's the same thing, I'm over, over and over printing it, right? So I'm going to say void cents int value. And I'm just going to copy this remaining cents thingy over here. X and put it right over here. And I'm going to put over here value. OK? So I'm not going to keep saying, I'm just going to say cents. Oh, I can't say cents because I have this exact same thing. Uh, uh, yeah, mm, cents, sure. That's bad. OK, I'm going to say remaining, remaining cents. OK? So that's what I'm going to do. Yes? I know, I can change the whole thing to a, to a function. You're going to see, I'll get there. You want, you want to tell me that I can write the function better than that? Ah! Everybody, please wipe out your memory of what Jesse said. OK? <laughs> Shush! You bad boy. Shush! That's C++. OK, next semester. All right, so remaining sense. Remaining cents, OK? In here, I'm going to put cents, OK? And I'm going to keep repeating that so I don't have to write that big thingy. Every single time I want to print remaining cents, I'm just going to call that function. You see that? All right? Remaining cents. Now in here, I have to say remaining cents again. OK, so that's remaining cents. So now I have to print the other one. What is the other one? Dimes. 10. And 10. And remaining cents. Then what do I have after that? 
Nichols. Nichols, and that's five, right? Five, five, correct, and remaining cents, correct? Are we okay with this? And then, and that's it, I think. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we, we, we don't have two cents, do we? Yes. Yeah. So, so, so what? There you go. Are you kidding me? No, not a float. There you go. Zero point. Is that good? It's going to just print zero point? <laughs> okay. Or I don't know. Or, or, or convert it to, I don't know, a float and print it out. Or I don't know. I don't, you want to show dollars and cents, then you can actually, so remaining, so you, you can change that remaining, to remaining cents to remaining, see that's a beautiful thing about a function. Now I want to change that remaining cents to remaining value. So the value that is coming in, I'm going to show percent d dot percent d, and I'm going to put value divided by 100, correct? and value mod 100. Is that correct? So it's going to show dollars point cents. Did I confuse the heck out of you? Yes. I'm happy. <laughs> Go find out why. OK, that's why you have to do that. So the remaining cents, so in here I'm going to do this. So I'm going to actually. You see that remaining cents? I'm going to double click on it and do control H, and that I'm going to say remaining, change all the remaining cents to remaining value. Okay, and I'm going to say replace all. There you go. So now my function is remaining value. I just changed everything. And in here, I'm going to call it remaining value. And since the function is recalled everywhere, all the code is going to change. Yes. Okay. 950 goes, uh, Nine, okay. If 950 goes 50 cents, yeah. this will be 0 divided by 100. That's 0. Yeah. And the second one, 50 mod 100 is 50. Okay. So, okay. So the money value now in here, if I, if I run this program, oh, I, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. I'm just doing it on the fly. So let's see if it actually does it. So I put nine hundred and nine dollars and what uh, ninety two cents. Is that good? So let's see what happens. So it's nine ninety two. That that is nine ninety two cents. Four loonies remaining value one point nine two. One loonie remaining value point two. Quarters remaining. Oh quarter. Oh sorry. I'm going to put a new line somewhere. Backslash, yeah. Backslash, yeah. Is that the one? Is that correct now? No. I have loonies. I have that one. That's fun. Oh, that's 10. It's, it's 100. Perfect. So that's 25, 25, 10, 10, 5, 5. Pardon me? Oh, percent N, that's a new version of, OK. Percent D, backslash N. OK, are we OK now? Let's run it one more time. So 9.83. So that's that one. Then 1 1.83, the remaining value is 0 0.83, 3 quarters. Dime zero, nickels one, and then it goes like that. Remaining value is 0 0.3. Okay, now th there's a bug in here, you understand. 0 0.3 is what? 
it's three cents, but it shows 30 now. That's where you use formatting, which means in here I have to say when you are printing this, print it in two spaces and fill the left with zero. Well, you're going to learn this later. It's not for today's thing. Because you mentioned it. I just want to put like a nice boy. I wanted to put cents over there and say, oh, I wanted to show you this and that. Okay, so that's why I'm doing it. So uh, like if I do it now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look kind of a little better maybe. You press uh, money value. So I'll put nine. What was that? The, the, the thing? Eight point what? 68. So that's what it's going to be. So now it's going showing 0803 and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? All right, four toonies, zero loonies, two quarters, one dime, one nickel, and three cents at the end. Okay, so ag and again, <clears throat> now uh, there is one more thing in here that, that is bothering me. Uh, do you look at this pattern? They are identical, right? We're going to change this after we learn arrays. That can be a function. I could simply have a function. Because they're just repeating patterns. Like exact same thing. Toonies, and it has 200, 200, 100, 100, 25, 25, 10, 10, 5, 5. That craves for a function that receives a value. And that value is 5. That value is 10. That value is 25. That value is 100. That value is 200. OK? We'll come to it soon. OK? So uh, do we understand how? First, I, I had two purposes for this. Number one to give you a very quick thing of functions to see how they work. So now we know. And this function, I didn't need to introduce it anything because they are very tight with each other. I'm just putting it at the top because remaining value and this, there are two things that go with, the, with each other, right? So I'm just leaving it over there. That's the money change thing. And program, so <clears throat> when somebody looks at my program, all they're going to see is that I'm going to, oh, I, what did I do? Yeah, all they're going to see is that I'm going to get some money value, and I'm going to change it to coins. OK, change maker. I'm going to get changed for it. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? All right. So that was functions. One more time? Uh-huh. Integer main void has to stay, has to be there. That's the beginning of everything. You have to have one function that starts everything. The other program, they are just being called when they are needed in your logic. You just introduce them where they are used. OK? That's all. Any function you use over here, you introduce them. Later on, you learn that all these things go where? All these introductions go into a? Header file. That's why standard input output header file is. It has what these things are called prototypes of functions. They call it prototypes. So it has all the names of the functions that exist in the C language compiler. So it introduces them to main. So main can use it. That's all it does. There is no code in, in uh, there is code, but they're all introduction. OK? Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK, too? So down to this point, it sold how to make, how to create function that accepts value, accepts values, right? We can actually have functions that return values. <clears throat> Again, I don't care how long it takes for me to, to go through these basic things of functions. I can postpone arrays, and then arrays go. Everything shifts down and goes to the time that I want to teach functions. Functions are, at this moment, Learning functions are very easy, and we can understand them. Okay, So that's why I'm teaching them. Uh, because that's the nature of C language. We have to understand what functions are to be a programmer. So we're going to come to uh, little complicated things that we have later on, like structures and things like that. We'll talk about it. But for now, let's have the function. So <clears throat> another type of thing that you can have is a function, um, is a function that returns something. Like for example, in here, you are getting a money value, correct? Right? You're getting a money value. So money value is essentially a double value, correct? 
So you need to be able to get a double value. Now in here, if I, if I run this program and, and I write 25, what's going to happen? Right? Some garbage is going to come out. No one knows what's what. Right? That's actually the number. Whoa, beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, right? So, so we have to learn how to write something that gets a double value properly. So let's do it. I can say over here, I want a function that receives, I want a function that receives a double value from keyboard. Okay? Does it need to get anything in its mouth? No. Because it's not getting it from any other function. It's getting it from keyboard. It's getting it from outside world. I mentioned that these parts, returning parts, an argument list of a function is only to communicate with another function, not with outside world. So my get double does not need any, anything. So in here I'm going to say, I'm going to say get double. And I'm not going to give it anything. But my get double is supposed to return what? It's returning a double. Because it's getting a double from outside world and gives it to other functions. So in here, I'm going to say double. That's what it's going to re receive. And so in this, in this place, instead of scanf, I'm going to say value is set to get double. So now I can put all the dirty work of dealing with the stupid users, going to enter garbage stuff in that function and not worry about it, and then put it somewhere else. Are we OK with this? Shall we do it quickly? OK? It's very easy, actually. It's not it, all the, you know, loops, you know, if statements, so we can do it in, in seconds. Are we OK? Are we OK? Oh, he's filming me now. Don't put it on YouTube. OK. Anyway, so are we OK with this? Shall we? OK. My job is to get a double. So I'm going to write over here, double value. And of course, I'm going to return that value. Remember that I told you, always complete your code up to a stage and then fill in the blanks. This is what I'm talking about. In here, I'm not going to write anything extraordinary. I'm just going to write scanf percent %lf. I am procrastinating value. So, so I am not doing anything extraordinary over here. So I just moved the scanf that I had in that function, in, the, in main, and brought it down into get double. So, Let's bring it down over here. So now, when my main program works, it's going to do the exact same thing, which means, oh, all right. <clears throat> so it's going to say, please enter the money value, right? Then it's going to say, get double. Now I'm going to press F11. So it jumps into that function. It has a double value that it's supposed to get that is garbage. It scans that value because that is its job, 9.68, right? And I hit enter. So the double value is what? 9.67999997. Remember I told you doubles are not precise? But anyways, it gets it. Now it's going to return it. Where does it return? The place that it was called. So it comes back out. And as soon as the value, this thing is done, the value will be set by what it was returned. Again, I put over here value, OK? Let's call it something else, because somebody's got to tell me, do we have to name the same thing over here because we are returning it? No. So I'm in here, I'm going to say the value, <laughs> just, to, just for the heck of it, just to make sure that you understand that it doesn't have to be exactly the same. OK? Anyways, but it comes over here, and then the change maker is going to print all the, all the things that it's supposed to do. OK? So non sex eight, and it, and it prints all the things that it's supposed to do. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Now, 
Now that I know, but again, I didn't solve any problem. I just procrastinated it. What, what does it mean? It means I just postponed the problem for a later date. Now I can give this function to Joe and say, Joe, could you please write a function for me that in a foolproof way gets a double? So my program works in a bad way, and he's doing his stuff. When he updated the code, I get it and insert it over here, and suddenly my program becomes intelligent. That's the beauty of functions. You can, this is called the prototype. Okay? This is called mm, prototyping, not prototype. This is prototyping, which means you write a function that doesn't quite work. This is the beta version of a function, of a software that you get. That you get, it's still buggy, it has problems in it. Okay? It's not, it, that's actually the alpha version, but anyways. So, <laughs> the alpha version it means it works, but it sucks. Okay? So, that, that's what it means. So, now let's fix that. Now I have the double value received. Okay? Now, when you, hopefully, when you studied about data entry, you know that everything is buffered into keyboard. Remember that? Did you read it? No, you didn't, you bad people. When you were reading about input and output, it was saying that all the information that is coming into you from keyboard in here is buffered. What does it mean, buffered? It's <clears throat> the lineup for getting coffee at Tim Hortons is buffered, which means you don't get your coffee immediately. You get into a buffer, and one by one, things are going out of the buffer into the Tim Hortons, and they are being served. So little by little, you're moving forward into the buffer until you get to the person and say, I want a small coffee with milk. And then you go out. That's the buffer. Are we OK with this? So that's exactly what it is, which means all the information entered into the keyboard is buffered. When I ask for a double, it wants a double. If it doesn't get a double, it's just going to go bananas. OK? That's how it's going to work. All right, so what do I do? <clears throat> I'm going to say, in scanf, I'm going to get two things. I'm going to get a double, and then I'm going to get a character. How do I read the character? Percent? C. Perfect. Now, in here, I'm going to say character. Hopefully new line. <laughs> and I'll tell you why I called the bat, okay? And I'm going to put over here, see, and I'm going to say over here, address of, hopefully new line, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> what did I, why did I call it hopefully new line? When somebody enters a number, <clears throat> when you enter anything into the computer, what is the process if you analyze it? Can somebody tell me? When, when, it's, when a scanf tells you, please enter your age, what do you, who's going to answer me? Otherwise, I'm going to choose a victim. OK. When I, when I, when you enter a number in keyboard, yes, you, my friend. You, you know, have you ever entered an integer? I just want you to, I'm not asking for any high thing. I'm asking about your experience. Have you ever had a thing and says, please enter your age? Have you ever done that before? In your, how did you do it? Well, perfect. So you enter a number, and then what do you do? That's it. That's all I was asking. So why did you say I didn't know? You knew it perfectly. So <clears throat> when you enter, what happens? You enter the number, and you hit enter, correct? Right? So essentially, every data entry is a value with an enter at the end, correct? If there is a value and not enter afterwards, it means something went wrong, correct? <clears throat> so all I need to do is to make sure that my percent C over here, hopefully new line, is hopefully new line. If it is new line, it means a double was read successfully. But if this new line of, of mine is not new line, it means something garbage was entered over there. And it couldn't read it. Because of that, my data is wrong. That's what it means. If scanf fails to read the double, the second one cannot be read, read too, right? It's like somebody's taking too much time in front of the line. 
Okay? You're not going to be served until that person is gone. If that person stays there forever, you're going to stay in Tim Horton's line forever. That's what happens. Okay? So that's what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do over here in that hopefully new line, I'm going to put some garbage value. I'm going to put an X in there. Why X? Because it's not new line. <laughs> okay? If scanf works, that X should have been replaced with new line, correct? Now in here, I'm going to say while. You know what while is, right? I'm going to say while. Hopefully new line is not equal to new line. You know what new line is. You do it at the end of printf, right? So while that thing is not new line, I have to say printf. Mm, bad double. Retry. And do it again. So what happens if they make a mistake, it sees that it's not right, it's going to get it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, until it's fixed. But there is one problem. If the person standing in front of the line forgot his wallet or her wallet, what can we do? I cannot just ask the, the person who's selling coffee, try to sell it, try to sell it again. The guy doesn't have wallet for heaven's sake, right? You have to tell that guy, say, go away until somebody with wallet comes forward. So you have to throw all of those people who are not legit, who are just standing over there to destroy your time, you have to throw them all out of the lineup before you can get it. So what do we do? If user doesn't enter backslash n, if it is not backslash n, I have to keep reading until I get to backslash in. I throw all the garbage away. If, user, if I ask the user to enter your age and user enters 25, 25, and then hits the enter key, I am trying to read an integer in here, right? But that's T. I have to throw it in garbage, throw it in garbage, throw it in garbage, throw it in garbage until I get to enter, right? Now I can retry. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say while. In here I'm going to say while. Hopefully new line. Or that's a big name. Can I change it small, make it smaller? Everybody knows what is that, right? Can I call it NL? I'm going to call it hopefully, hopefully new line. <laughs> HNL. Can I call that that? Because that? I don't want to go for a long, long name. Okay. So that's that one. I just want to name it that way. Okay. So it's the same thing exactly. Now I'm going to say while that hopefully new line is not new line. Scanf, just one character. Read character by character until you get to new line. All right? So this essentially is, I'm sorry that I'm going to give you this, ex this example. It's, well, apologize. I really apologize. But this is a perfect thing that's always going to register in your mind. Have you ever been to washroom and see if somebody didn't flush? Right? What do you do first? You flush. That's literally flushing. This little piece flushes the keyboard. It keeps reading until all the garbage is out and it reaches to backslash and so I have an empty keyboard to work with. Okay? Because of that, I'm going to take it out of here. I, I know, because it's, a, because it's flushing the keyboard, I'm going to take it out. So I'm going to take that out and just put it somewhere so it's, it's easier to understand. So I'm going to say void flush keyboard. I'm not changing anything. I'm just putting the dirty work that I have over there. So in here, I'm going to say character. No, I can actually call it junk. All right? Character junk. And in here, I'm going to put something that is junk. 
I'm going to call it J, <laughs> Jung. So while it's not backslash and keep reading, right? So in here, I'm going to say flush keyboard. So what happens? I'm saying while the hopefully new line is not new line, flush the keyboard, tell it's bad, top double retry, and get it again. And if this time they enter it, sorry, 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 sorry. If this time they enter it properly, then it becomes a new line. It gets out and returns the value. If it's still not right, it's going to keep doing it. So if this get double will not let people go out until they enter a proper value. Take a look. Enter value. I'm going to do this. Hit enter. Add double. It just throws everything in garbage, waits for me. Now I'm going to say $9.32, sir, sire. It's going to say bad. I only asked for one bubble. Why? 932 went into a double, but instead of new line, there was a space. Still not good. Now I'm going to say $9.68 only, and I hit enter, and poof, it passes through. A foolproof entry, which means your user cannot enter anything wrong. They have to, have to enter a proper double. Now I'm going to this is a good function, right? I can use it. It's beautiful. So I'm going to take these two. Flush keyboard has nothing to do with my uh, exchange thingy. I'm going to take this, X, and I'm going to create a new thing over here, add new item, and I'm going to call it, say, utilities.c. And I'm going to put them right over there. I need to use get double over there. I'm going to get the get double, copy, put it up here, and voila. I have a clean and nice program. Now what do I have? I have a change maker program. I have a get double program. And what does my main do? Please enter a money value. Value is equal to get double, change maker, double. Are we OK with that? How can I make this simpler? Can anybody tell me? I'm just going to save this. I'm going to call it a change maker main one, one dot C, and I'm going to put over here zero one dash, save it as that. <clears throat> can anybody tell me how can I make this simpler without looking at their cell phone and the match that is happening? <laughs> can you? Can you? Thank you. You got 2% for your test. What happened? I am setting get double as value. Then I'm pa passing the value in here. Why do I have a value for? Just put the get double in there. See? Aren't you saying that? See? Just take it. It's, it's common sense. Isn't value the same as get double? It is. So get the get double thingy and put it in here and get rid of the value all the, way, all the way through. I don't need a value in here. Right? Now, how is my program working? Please enter the money value. Change maker, get a double. Ta da! It first gets the double, passes it to change maker, change maker does the thing. Are we okay with this? Okay, this is a little too rich for your blood, okay? <laughs> this is a little confusing. That's why I named the other one. So this is uh, something that you're going to see a lot when you see C program, because C programmers don't like to have extra variables lying around. They just want to review. So, so this is, do, do you understand what happened, right? Yeah. So, I am, I am, so when compiler reaches over here, it says, oh, I want to call change maker, right? But I have to pass a value to it, correct? What is that value? A function called get double. Okay, so I have to call that function to see what is the value to pass it to change maker, correct? So it calls that one first. The outcome of this one is a double value, goes to change maker, and life is beautiful. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? One? 
One more time. Which line number you're talking about? Number nine. Oh, you're saying, don't I have to? I have a question. What is get double get double returning? What is change metric and receiving? That one is returning a double. This one is receiving a double. Simple as that. There is no mediation needed. <laughs> it is sending a double. That's a receiving a double. So they're just a, what they call it, match made in heaven. <laughs> right? So you should put the double in there and it's done. So this works the exact same thing. And that's how C programs get uh, simple and easy to understand. Now, if the other one was understandable for you, do it that way. That's fine. You're just starting. Okay? But know that this can happen too. So you see it says, please enter the money value. Then I'm getting a double. And the value that get double is returning goes to money. Money goes to change maker. And it's going to do whatever is done. And I don't know how it's going to happen. But I know it's going to make change out of that double. How? I have to go take a look at all the code that I have in different files that are happening. Are we OK? Are we OK, one? Are we OK, two? Five minutes break, we're going to come back, and we're going to learn what arrays are. All right, now. <clears throat> Let's say I want to write a program that finds the average of 50 double, oh, five doubles. I want to write a program that finds the, wants to find the average of five doubles. Okay? I have written already the get double thingy, so I'm going to reuse it in here too. Okay, so I'm going to have that get double of mine here. Copy. And I'm going to paste it right here. So I can use it in here. I don't want to have uh, bad values entered, so I'm going to use that reuse that get double of mine over here too. So my job is to get five doubles and find out what is the average of these five doubles. Okay? So how do I do that? Uh, I'm going to create um, a double value. I'm going to call it uh, value. Okay? And then I'm going to need a repeater because I, I, I counter because I need to count how many doubles I'm getting. So I'm going to create and get an integer, C and T. And this is where a for loop is good to be used, because I want to do something five times. I'm going to say for C and T set to 0, C and T less than 5, and C and T plus plus. There you go. Easy. So I know this is going to happen five times. That's why I told you you can use a for loop. It's just when you know how many times you want to do something. OK? So in here, I'm going to say printf. Please enter five numbers. OK, and I'm going to go to new line. Now, because I want to, if I want to show, please enter five numbers, then I want to show which number, because they need to keep track of it, right? If it's like 50 numbers, they don't know, did I enter the 46th or not, right? So I want to actually show which entry is coming in. That's why I'm going to prompt them with a number. This is number one, number two, number three. So. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say printf. And in here, I'm going to show percent %d. And I'm going to show uh, something like that to show which number is being, sh which row they are in. If I put c and t over here, what's going to be the output look, uh, what the output's going to look like? It's going to be, the what is the first number that's going to get printed? It's going to be 0. Right? Because it starts from 0 and it prints 0 first. We don't want humans to see 0. They freak out. They don't know what is number 0. They want from 1. So I add a 1 beside it. So whenever it's 0, it shows 1. Whenever it's 1, it shows 2. Whenever it's 2, it shows 3. So in here, I'm going to put plus 1. All right? Now I can scan the value. How do I scan the value? I say value.
is said to get double. See, I'm reusing my code. So I'll make sure if they enter garbage, I'm gonna not, not, I'm not gonna let it pass by. So I'm getting the value. Now when I get the value, I have to add them up in something so I can show what the average is at the end, right? So in here, I, ha I need another double value. You do this like this, you lose mark. So if you have something like this, you lose mark. Remember, in my class, every single variable must have its own type in front of it. So that's double, sum, and I'm going to set it at the beginning to zero. So the sum of all values is zero, and as soon as I get it, I'm going to say sum plus equal value, and now I'm having the sum of the values coming in one by one, right? And so what happens is that it gets the first one, adds it to the sum, gets the second one, adds it to so sum will hold the sum of all five value. Or I could say sum is set to sum plus value. Potatoes, potatoes, no difference, right? Either this or the shorthand version of it, that is sum plus equal value. Now at the end, I'm going to say printf the average of the five numbers are percent, let's put three decimal points after the thing, LF, and I'm going to show the sum divided by five, and I'm going to get the average. Are we okay with this? All right, let's run the program, see how it works. Control F5, first I'm going to run it, then I'm going to walk through, then I'm going to say, oh, scanf undefined. What's going on? Uh, did I do anything wrong in here? Ah, oh, I am using scanf over here, but I did something wrong. I did not include all those beautiful stuff, so that doesn't know what scanf is. My bad. It's a separate file. I have to bring the because this function doesn't know what scanf. Did I have a prototype of scanf up there? No. So I have to bring those things over here. So that was a problem. Now the other one's going to fail. <laughs> but that's good. Utilities are going to get fixed. Any place utilities are used, got to be using it, and it's going to be fine. Now let's see what else is the problem. Oh, it's nothing. Good. So please enter no five numbers. Then it's going to show one. Now I'm going to put 34.56. Enter. Two. I'm going to put 9.34, and I'm going to put yoo-hoo. Then it's going to say bad double, retry. OK? So now the get double thing is working. I'm reusing my code. So now in here, I'm going to say, uh, what do I say? I say, I don't know, 23.45. Now it's going to go to 4, 67.89, and 1, 2, 3 at the end, and hit Enter, and the average of Numbers are, uh, is actually, the average of yada yada is 51 point something. So I have to fix that and go to new line. Are we okay with this? Uh, da, 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 da. Is. Is, and I go to new line afterwards. Anybody wants me to walk through this? Who doesn't want me to walk through this? Okay, one person doesn't walk through, the rest want it, so good. I'll walk through it. Okay, all right. I did, remember I told you when one person has problem, just did you see what happened right now? Did you see what happened? I said, who wants me to walk through? Nobody did like this. And I said, who doesn't want to walk through? What does it mean? Then you should have all, right? And only two, three people did like this, which means the rest of you, are those people who in elections don't vote. <laughs> they don't care who's going to come and rule, right? We are those people. All right? Get involved. Matter. If you want something, do it. Okay? Don't be anonymous. So three people over here ruled all you guys. You just saw that, right? You experienced it by first hand. Bad people you are. Anyways, let's continue. Okay. It's one of those gotcha moments. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's walk through this. So what's happening here? I'm coming down. 
value is garbage, sum has zero in it because I initialized it, C and T became zero because I just passed through this. So C and T is zero. So it's going to actually show C and T plus one, that is one. So it's going to show that value. I'm not going to walk through get double. We've done that before. So I'm going to press F10, which means it runs it all at once. Oh, it waits for me over here. I'm putting 56.89. I hit enter. The value is entered is 56 point whatever. And that 56 point whatever is going to be added to the sum. So sum will be 56 uh, whatever goes back up. CNT will be added by one. Now it's going to show two over here because one, one, one is one plus one is two. And then it comes over here. Then I'm going to show, I don't know, 10. At, oh, put 10 and what's going on? Too big, too big. What happened? Did I just close it? Okay, now my, my, my uh, Visual Studio is going to crash. Let me pause this. Okay, so now that it's recovered, let's run it again. Uh, oh, I can actually set it to come and execute up to certain points. So I can actually bring the mouse over here and click now. It's going to run quickly and just stop at this. So I'm going to go to debug and say start debugging. And poo, it runs, runs the f uh, right, uh, puts the first one over there. As you see, comes and stops at get double. Now I put over here 10.2 and I hit enter. Now it comes over here 10.2, sum, zero. After that is done, it's going to be added by one, comes up, prints the second one, run get double, waits over there for me. Now I'm going to put 20.3 and I hit enter. So it's going to say 20.3 plus 10.2. And when we add them up, it becomes 30.5, right? Okay. So now that it's done, I'm going to put the stop sign here. Now I'm going to say continue the rest because I don't want to go step by step. Continue. Now it's going to go run right and stop to the other one. So 30. Point four. Oh, I should have stopped this one. Take that one up, continue. 40.5 and 50.6 and hit enter. Now it comes over here. The sum is 152 divided by 5 and that's going to get printed and I'm going to get 30.4 is the average. Are we okay with this? Any problem down to here? So now that I've done the average in three minutes, I want to teach you the arrays because at 125 it ends, right? So <laughs> let's see what I want to do. Let's see if I can actually do it. What if I asked, what if I asked you to write a program that gets five numbers, prints the average and the numbers too? Prints the five numbers. Oops. How can I do that? Because in this one, I'm getting it, and I'm losing it the next time I'm overwriting it, right? You get the value, 10. You add it to sum, you go up. You get 20, that 20 overwrites the 10. Then you add the 10 to 20, it becomes 30. You get another, say, 20. That 20 overwrites the 10 before. So, it's gonna, so you're going to lose the previous values. You cannot show all five of them. If I told you show the five values and print them out, then you wouldn't be able to do it, right? So I need to have five variables. The problem is that if I put five variables, v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, how do I make this thing to go? What if it's 50? What if it's 500? For that, you can ask the compiler to create series of variables for you. How? Instead of doing this beautiful thing that I have done over here, so in here I'm going to call it 03-average. By the way, anything I write over here you can use. So this utility stuff that I have, it's not cheating. I'm the teacher. You can actually use because people always ask, can I use the code that you have written in my program? Yes, you can. I wrote it. I'm your teacher. Okay? So now, 
if I want to have five values, all I need to do is to say five in front of it. There you go. Now I have five values, OK? What are the indexes of the values? It's value. What is the first one? What is the first one? What is the first one? My lady, what is the first one? I have five values. What is the index of the first one? What is it, gentlemen? What is the index of the first one? Zero. zero. Because C always starts from the zero. What is the last value? Four. So when you say five, it's from zero to four. How many fingers? Ten. From zero to nine. Remember that. OK? Now, all I need to do, instead of having value over here, now I can say value C and T and C and T. So what happened over here is this. When C and T is zero, value zero will be put overwritten by get double. Then Z, C and T becomes one, value one, value two, value three, value four, value five we don't have, right? Value four, and we are done. We have all the values over there. All I need to do is to repeat my loop over here and just print the numbers. What did I do? Repeat the loop over here and say printf say percent point two lf and put a space and in here I'm gonna say value C and T and then go to new line. Backslash n. So what happens over here is this. When I run this program, and you're going to go right now, please walk. Oh, cannot open yada yada for. Yikes. What happened? Did I, didn't I stop debugging? No. What happened? Let me, let me do it with, give me two seconds. Let me just do F5. Okay, because of that uh, thing that I have done, uh, it's not ended the program, but give me two seconds. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah, so when I run the program, there you go. I'm going to put 10, 20, 30, 40, and 1, 2, 3, whatever, point something. Let's put something like that. Then it's going to actually show the numbers. And what happened? Did I have a scanner over there by any chance? Oh, I have a get double again. <laughs> Sorry. Let me stop it. Take the get double out. One last time. And 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 point whatever. And it shows all the numbers because they are now in the array one by one and then the average of them. So you don't lose the values. That was the intro to arrays. You come back, we'll talk about it again. Have a beautiful day.